if I've inspired one person to go out and chase their dreams and find their joy, that is what will be the absolute cherry on top. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for cheering for us. Thank you for loving the game. And I can't wait to see where curling is going to go. Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Six times a Scotties champion, two-time world champion, and that unforgettable Olympic gold medal. For many Canadians, Jennifer Jones is their connection to curling. Uh, it's a conversation. It's an announcement so many of us never wanted to have happen, but this is a reality. JJ is retiring. And she joins me now. Uh, Jennifer, so wonderful to see you. As you get ready for your 18th and final Scotties, let me just start by saying congratulations and how are you feeling? It's definitely been a little bit of an emotional roller coaster ride. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sad. I, you feel like you're, you're leaving something that you love so much, but I have so many great memories and I'm so grateful for those. And my whole family's going to be at the Scotties and I know it's going to be a little bit of a celebration and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, when you called me to tell me this news, uh, I could hear the weight of the decision in every word you shared. So tell me about that, Jen, about how long you've been considering this and sort of what the tipping point was, because I know uh, how much you love this game and love being on the ice. That's the interesting part, Devin, is that I always thought I'd stop curling when I didn't want to practice anymore, or it just became a grind in the travel. But for me, I love it just as much today as I did when I was a kid. Like I, I've never, ever lost that love of the game. So it was just, you know, honestly, everybody always talks about my retirement because of my age and they just think it's time. And so you, it kind of gets in your mind. You're like, no, I still want to play. And then slowly I was this year, I was in Japan and both my kids were sick and I just felt, you know, I want to be there. I want to be the one that's giving them a hug when they're not feeling well. And then Isabella won an award and I was curling in a slam and, and as much as they never make me feel bad because they always tell me that I'm always there for them. And we, we have these scheduled FaceTime dates. And even when I'm on the road, I feel like I'm super present, but I want to be that mom with those pom poms in the front row, um, just cheering my kids on. And it's just becoming more and more challenging if I'm trying to do all of these things. And so when I sat back and reflected, I figured it was time. Uh, I marvel at the, your ability, um, so many of the curlers' ability, uh, Jen, to, to balance everything, and and it is a grind, no doubt. Um, how did how did Mum, how did Carol respond to this? Because she's she's been there through this all. She was amazing, and you know, it's my mom is the primary caregiver of our kids when we're gone, and you know, she just turned 80 and she's still driving on the 400 and driving them to all their activities. And, and she's never, ever once said it's too much. And so when I told her, all she did was give me a hug and said that she's really proud of me. Uh, your longevity, your consistency of greatness is unbelievable. There's no other way to describe it, Jen. You, you break through with that first Scotty's victory in 2005, and we're going to get into that in a second. But but then, you know, all those years later, 17 years later, you're at the Olympics. So for, for decades, you were at the top of your game. How do you describe your ability to be great for so long? I don't know. And I, I think for me, it was just this love of the game, the smell of the ice I always talk about. I feel like I'm at a spa when I'm curling, that everything just escapes and everything goes quiet. And it's just my, it's my place and my home. And I think that that's why I'm really struggling to say goodbye because it's a home to me. And so it's never been about the podium. It's never been about medals and success and records. It's just been about feeling the ice and being a part of a great team and and trying to see how far we could push the limits how far we could push women's curling how far we could push ourselves and i'll never forget winning the olympic goal and i think a week later i was phoning all of our coaches okay so what can we do better what can we do different how can we be better and that's been kind of the mo of my whole career i just that's what's exciting to me is trying to see if we could push the limits and standing on the podium has just been a cherry on top like just it's never been the ultimate goal for me 
Um, but I feel very grateful that it's happened a few times. Well, you've changed the game. So know that uh, despite leaving the four person game, uh, your imprint on curling will last forever. So don't worry about that. Let's go back to 2005. Uh, the shot that people still talk about today, uh, Mike Harris, and you know, in preparation for our conversation, I rewatched that, Jen, um, yeah. in St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. And, and Mike Harris on the broadcast said that is the best shot he's ever seen to win a game. Probably still rings true today. We have that video, so let's tee it up. Let's watch it now, and let's also talk about your dad, Larry, who was there to congratulate you on the shot. So let's watch the shot. The most difficult attempt, Deal. trying to come in oh, off a stone on the outside, trying to get the roll to the stone at the button. They're working on it frantically. There's the contact, there's the roll, she's made it! <laughs> That is the best shot I've ever seen to win a game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Goosebumps. <laughs> Jen, what comes up for you? Oh, just a flood of emotions. Just, I, when I started curling, all I wanted to do was even like make a provincial. I just wanted to make a provincial. And then and I thought if I could go to one Canadians and then all of a sudden here I was in this moment to win a Canadian championship. And I just remember feeling so grateful that I had the rock. You know, everybody always says they want the ball. Well, I wanted the rock. And I, I just remember everything I felt. I can close my eyes and I can put myself back in the moment. And I think that that's one thing that I'm so grateful for is that I, I remember the crowd and it was really bustling when the rock stopped and we're trying to line it up and we didn't have a ton of time. And I, I just remember going down and I, I felt like I couldn't swallow. Like I had no saliva. Like it was just my heart was going to come out of my chest. And, but that's what I play sport for is that adrenaline rush. I will never go down a roller coaster ride, but um, unless it's like in the kid land, but I <laughs> will guarantee like this is my adrenaline rush. And so I, and then I remember flipping the rock over and the crowd went completely silent. Wow. And all I said to myself was here goes nothing and make it or miss it. All I wanted was that chance, a chance to win the Canadians, and we had it. And then I, I remember letting it go and saying, "Oh my, it's close. <laughs> it's going to be close." And then at the second hog line, I think I think it's going to hit it in the right spot. And then it all happened, and I thought my body was literally going to explode. It was like this out of body experience, and seeing my dad run down the ice and Trisha Eck, who has been one of my dear friends for a long time and it just just all the memories of that and I just thought that if I never threw another curling stone that this would be something that would captivate me for the rest of my life. Mm, beautiful. Uh, your dad Larry was such a huge part of this. Uh, what I uh, what stood out to me re-watching that Jen is you t you took a time out ahead of your skip stones uh, and you looked at the in-off, uh, perhaps on your first, and Larry said, no, 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 that, that's the last shot. Um, and then he was right there to meet you, to win your first and to have your dad along for all of it. Um, what, what, what comes up for you? What reflections do you have of, of the great curling dad, Larry? Oh, there's just so many. I was so lucky to have this dad who who just loved me and would do anything for, for his girls. He was, he was the epitome of what a dad could be. And I, I remember being at the curling club for my life. Well, I grew up at that curling club at the St. Mattel curling club. My dad was so active and he loved it. And so I remember watching them curl and I would beg him to take me out, just beg him, please dad, can I go out? And every Saturday morning, the only time we get ice is at eight in the morning and I would get out of bed and I'd go and get him and we would practice for hours and hours and hours. And, and he, he just, he just shared his love of the game with me. And I really believe that it's that love of the game that has helped me play in pressure moments and just really enjoy what curling has brought to my life. And it's all because of my dad. He taught me the game, but he showed me what curling meant to my heart. And because of that, he's always inside of me. Every time I curl, I think of my dad. And 
just how much he just, how curling brought our family together, how curling, um, it's the reason I, you know, I'm with my husband and it's just all of these things. And so for my dad to share that moment and to see him and how excited he was and my dad never ever made a provincial and that's all he wanted to do. But in that moment he became a Canadian champion and, um, I'm so grateful. I got to share that with him. There's a lot of emotion, Jen, and I'm trying yeah. to keep it together right now. Um, you are transcendent um, in the sense that when when I shared your news, my mentions and all over social media, it has been lighting up. Um, what does it mean to you to know that you have been Canadian's connection to Curly? I mean, I get the sense it's what you've always wanted. It's to inspire people and make them love the game as much as you. It appears that's the case, and sometimes it's only through the lens of moments like this that you get to see that, but you represent that, Jen. And that's the biggest compliment I could ever receive. Like, if I can have had any impact on growing the game and sharing our love of the game and showing how fabulous curling can be, that would be the biggest compliment I could ever receive because... Curling has given me more than anything. It's given me confidence. I was a shy kid and now I curl in front of, you know, millions of people and I and I can talk to people and it's all because of, of the game. And so I think that that's when I made the announcement and all the, the messages that I've received about, you know, people's link to the game is because of me and then just my longevity. People have followed me for so long. We've grown up together and that has brought a lot of emotion to me because I... I'm very humbled by that. I, I curled because I loved the game. I wanted to share my love of the game. I wanted to, it made me feel happy. And then to have some sort of impact that, you know, that could last a, a long time is, I don't think any human could ever really expect to do that when they start off on a path. And to say that maybe I've had some sort of contribution is, um, it's really humbling. Well, you have, um, no doubt. Thank you. you have contributed immensely. Have you, you allowed yourself at all, Jen, to visualize what it might be like going on to the ice um, for your final Scotties game? I'm trying not to because I really, I have this motto to enjoy the moment, enjoy every second of every moment of every day of my life. And so I'm trying not to get too ahead of myself because I know I'm going to be sad. And as much as I don't want to be sad and I'm going to be happy and grateful for everything, um, it is going to be hard to say goodbye to something that I just, I love so much. And, um, but it's just going to be a, I'm, I'll still somehow be involved in the game. I don't know what that's going to look like yet. So it's not going to be a goodbye forever, but I sure do love sliding over those Scotty's hearts. Uh, well, that's my question. And, and I put out to, to the, to the masses, what questions do you have for JJ? And that was the biggest one, Jen is are we going to see you in a commentating position coaching doing whatever what what can you give us any insights into how you're going to be around the game because people want you in it oh well that makes me happy i don't know and everybody thinks i probably have this plan but i don't it was always enjoy the moment be in the moment i was curling we were trying to be you know successful and right now i want to focus on this body so i don't have any um any any plans i've had some opportunities over the years presented to me you know that that have interest me but that i've always said no because i just wanted to keep playing and so now it's time to kind of turn my attention to what what will be next and i do want to be involved in the game in some way and i don't know what that looks like yet um but hopefully uh, i'll be involved in some way and that doesn't maybe it'll just be in some small way and i'll go on to another business opportunity i i don't know yet I know how much you love the Olympics, and we're going to watch uh, some of the 2014 magic because you went undefeated. You were a woman on a mission, maybe like I've never seen. Um, but some have asked about the timing of it and the Olympic cycle, and I know you and Brent are going to look to, to get to the games and mixed doubles, but was that uh, did that complicate things, knowing that maybe you had the chance to qualify for Italy with it being that close? Did that impact any of your decision-making, Jen? It did for sure. Cause I, when I was sitting back and reflecting and, you know, I, I do play a lot of mixed doubles as well. So from September to December, I didn't have one weekend off between women's and mixed doubles. And, um, and again, like I ask my kids every year, should we keep 
should I keep curling? And every year they say yes. So we have a plan and they were totally on board. So it was more just me being away. And when I sat down and reflected and I, you know, I, I look at my mom and how everything works within our family about how, you know, to kept, make sure the girls are taken care of. Um, I just couldn't for sure commit to two years. I couldn't, maybe I could have done two years, but I don't, I don't know. I couldn't say with mm. certainty and maybe everybody can, but I really couldn't commit to two years and I didn't want to play one more year. And then all of a sudden I can't commit to that next year. Right. And all of a sudden they only have a few months to play with somebody and try to go to the Olympic trial. So I wanted to give the girls an opportunity to find some magic with somebody else and have, have that chance, have this full year to really work out any kinks with somebody new. I care about these girls immensely. And I told them I'm here, I pick my brain and I really want them to, to find some success. All right, let's get to 2014. I don't know many athletes who love representing the Maple Leaf more than Jennifer Jones. So let's watch some of the 2014 magic. Jennifer Jones from curling great to curling legend, just like that. I could do this all day with you, Jen. You, I know. Have, you have provided a lifetime of memorable moments, but uh, I, and I don't know if this is making it harder or if you are loving relishing this, but like th these are iconic moments. They are, and um, I remember that moment. So I mean, you couldn't ask for a better kind of shot to win on the to win an Olympics, and uh, I remember getting in the hack and. I kind of had looked towards the family earlier in the end and they were all crying. So it's like, Hey, look away, look away. Right. right. And, but I, I, I let the rock go and I knew the moment I let it go that we were Olympic champions. And you could tell by like, I almost started crying immediately and it was, Oh, it was so magical. Just that 10 seconds, Caitlin and I were, you know, we knew for sure because we could see the rock that we, we had won and, Oh, I never thought I'd be an Olympic champion. Like I just, it's crazy to me and to hear oh, Canada at the Olympics and to like sl sliding over those Olympic rings. It's just like sliding over the Scotty's hearts. It was, it was an out of body experience. Who gets to do that? Mm. And our families were all there. And then when that rock hit and all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're an Olympic champion. It was just magical. And you feel like you do it not for yourself. And that's what was like crazy for me. You, I felt when that moment happened that we did it for all of Canada. It felt like mm -hmm. this, just this, I don't even know how to explain it, but you felt like when you take that step up on the podium, it's the one time, like, you don't think about yourself at all. You just think about Canada. And that is what's magical about the Olympics. Oh, chills. Um, Okay, we're winding down here because you've got a Scotties to prepare for. Uh, Jen, uh, to the point about doing it for all of Canada, you have always been so wonderfully gracious signing autographs. You're always the last person in the arena uh, because you know what that moment can mean about sparking a dream, about that time Jennifer Jones took that picture or signed that autograph. So over to you to say something to the fans. Devin. My dad once told me, he said, you know, Jen, you're pretty good at this curling. I said, well, thanks, dad. I really like it. And I do love it. And I told you earlier that it was, it's the love of the game that's really kept me going. But it's because of you, honestly, the fans that you've made my dreams bigger than I could have ever imagined. Your love of the game, cheering us on, being with us in the agony or defeat and just making the environment electric so that women could shine on a national stage. I've been through the evolution of curling where we used to have one event on television and now there's so many. And it's because of you, the fans, that my dreams were magical. And so you've made my life far bigger than I could have ever thought possible. And I'll never be able to thank, thank the fans enough, thank curling enough. Um, but just know that I'm grateful for every opportunity. I'm grateful for every message. I am grateful for every time a fan came down and told me their story. I'm grateful for every hug. And if there's one little kid that I've 
inspired to go and chase their dreams, whether that means curling, whether that means they want to be an artist or a baseball player. If I've inspired one person to go out and chase their dreams and find their joy, that is what will be the absolute cherry on top. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for cheering for us. Thank you for loving the game. And I can't wait to see where curling is going to go. You know when you have tough conversations and you sort of linger, Jen, because you don't want it to end? That's kind of yeah. what I'm doing right now. But we have to wrap for now. Um, and just personally, thank you. Thank you for all you have given to the game. Uh, I know this isn't it. I know we're going to be seeing you. Uh, and I know there's so much more ahead. But for now, uh, just thank you quite simply. And uh, go and try and win that seventh. Eh? I know how badly you still want to win. So um, just thank you, truly, on behalf of so many people who won't get the opportunity to say it. Extraordinary. You uh, are simply the best. Thank you. Thank you.